Greetings, everyone, and welcome to this webinar. Today's topic is the overview of ISO 13485 medical devices. I am Arta Lamani, the PECB organizer of this webinar, and the guest for today is Raza Shah, PECB certified trainer and chief editor and owner of Vitich. Please feel free to write your questions and comments in the question box in the right-hand control panel, or you can use the raise hand function. We will unmute you, and you will have a chance to ask the question directly. Mr. Shaw will answer to all questions accordingly at the end of the presentation. Please, Mr. Shaw, you may start the presentation. Thank you. Thank you very much. Uh, I am Raza Shah from Pakistan. Uh, today, our topic is overview of IAS 1345 medical devices. Welcome to everyone. Uh, as a, I, as a uh, professional, I have been uh, uh, conducting audit uh, for the last 15 years in uh, different, on different standards. And uh, I am a reader for ISO 9000, ISO 14000, SA 8000, ISO 1345, and ISO 22000. Today, uh, we will have an overlook of medical devices standard, which is ISO 1345. Uh, as most of the people are well familiar with the uh, standard ISO 9000. Uh, so the ISO 1485 is um, also a quality management system uh, latest standard, but it is for the medical devices. Um, it has the same requirements like ISO 9001, but it has some additional requirements and, and, and which are more mainly focused on the regulatory standards and meeting customer requirements and maintaining the effective quality management system. Uh, same like uh, ISO 9000, it's, it focuses on customer satisfaction and continual improvement. But uh, it also taking care of uh, other regulatory uh, requirements. Um, more, the ISO 1485 um, is uh, have some more emphasis on record meeting records, meeting medical devices requirement, risk management, work environment and cleanliness, compute uh, complaint handling and corrective action. ISO 1485 follows the uh, uh, process approach introduced in ISO 9002 standard. Uh, so its uh, main focus is on the regulations. It uh, emphasizes more on documented management review awareness and sources required to meet them, define process and records to demonstrate confirmation. So um, as far as the ISO 1348 is concerned, its main uh, focus is the regulatory requirements. This, uh, uh, standard is uh, applicable on volunteer, volunteer basis and designed to a uh, particular medical device manufacturer. Um, it uh, it covers all the quality management system requirement and it which include uh, in Europe, Australia, Japan, Canada, South Korea, and Brazil. But it doesn't mean that uh, a company certificate certified in Europe. Uh, can be uh, uh, certified in uh, other country because the, every country has its own regulations and if a company have to certify uh, in this country it have to fulfill the requirements of this country also. Uh, for example, uh, if you are uh, certified on uh, ISO 1345 in Europe and you want to get certificate, launch your medical devices in other country like uh, Canada or Japan, you have to fulfill the requirements of these countries and um, you have to um, get a 1345 uh, um, certification from these countries also. Uh, basically, ISO 1345 provides the requirement for a comprehensive management system and can be used by a, an organization for the design, development, production, installation, and servicing of medical devices, as well as for the design, development, and for gain of latest services. The requirement of uh, ISO 1345 describes a systematic approach in which manufacturers can identify, review, and, and decide on the appropriate manner 
to incorporate regulatory requirements, other standards, and regulatory guidance documents into the quality management system include. So, uh, necessary sources, uh, uh, system of internal audit and management review, infrastructure and competent personnel, documentation and record for operation of quality management system, system to address non-conformity, uh, corrective action and preventive actions. <coughs> so, if uh, we, uh, we can see that basically it uh, its structure is similar like ISO 9000. Uh, quality management system. Now, if we, uh, as we are going uh, uh, further, uh, we ha have the different section, uh, and we will overview this section. Section cover the scope. Talk about the standard and how it applies to the organization. Section two, normative reference references, and every document that should be used along with the standard. <laughs> section section uh, three terms and definition gives definition related to medical devices. Uh, overview the key section of uh, ISO one three four and five section four quality management system requirement section five covers the management responsibility section six talk about the resource management section seven describes the product realization section eight measurement analysis and improvement. Now we will. Uh, review uh, these uh, uh, section in detail. Uh, section four, uh, four uh, is that about a general requirement. Four point one: implementation and maintenance of an effective quality management system provide medical devices meeting customer and regulatory requirements. Ensure control of outsourced processes. So we have uh, uh, to. Uh, fulfill the requirements to fulfill to meet the customer expectation and regulatory requirements, and also if there is an outsourced process, we have to also control this process. <coughs> and 4.2 documentation requirements: what is to be done, and by whom, when, where, and how it is to be done. What materials, materials, equipment, and documents are to be used. How an activity is to be monitored and measured, design history file, technical file, complaint file, device record, and any uh, exclusion. Uh, if there is any exclusion, we have to also uh, describe this exclusion. So, uh, we have to uh, develop a proper um, uh, documentation procedures, who is responsible for what and who is doing what. And uh, the section 5 is management responsibility and uh, management responsibility start with the management commitment as uh, same like the ISO 9000 um, management commitment uh, is demonstrated by actions ensuring process of trade as an effective network of integrated processes and uh, 5.2 is the customer focus ensure customer requirements are understood. And uh, the third is, is the quality policy. Establish commitment to quality, continuing effectiveness of the quality management system, meeting customer and regulatory requirements. Uh, so, if uh, we conclude this slide, uh, it uh, is starting with the uh, management commitment and uh, uh, with the customer focus and quality policy. A, a, a development of the quality policy and main uh, focus of the quality policy is the fulfillment of the customer requirements as well as the regulatory requirements. And the quality policy should be reviewed periodically for continual, uh, continued applicability. 5.4 is planning includes setting quality objectives and associated targets for the quality management system and for medical devices related services and defining uh, time frame for achieving targets. We have to plan and set the targets and we have to describe in what way, in what way we, we will be uh, able to achieve this objective. An organization quality management system is ensuring by varying needs, particular objectives, the production, um, the products provided, the process and employed, the size and structure of the organization. So, uh, the quality management system of uh, different organization will be different because it is influenced uh, through the uh, by the uh, needs by the 
objectives by the product by the process and the size and structure. ISO 13485 does not imply in, uh, uniformity in the structure of the quality management system or uniformity of the recommendation. So it is not in the necessity that all the uh, ISO 13485 certified companies have the same uh, set of documents uh, or uh, structure. They can vary, but they have to fulfill the requirements of the standard. But uh, it is upon each organization how it will fulfill these requirements. Uh, 545 is related to responsibility, authority, and uh, communication. Uh, uh, the organization should have to uh, define the responsibility as authority, and uh, the, it should be documented. Position, description, and including the responsibilities and authority. Organization chart can be included in document procedure or flow chart. Uh, independent must independent must be demonstrated for certain activities. Uh, like uh, internal audit, um, one design review, participant management response, uh, representative, bug document must be controlled. So uh, <coughs> the organization have to set the responsibilities and authorities and these responsibilities and authorities should be communicated and must be documented because uh, it is the requirement of uh, 4.2.3 that every document uh, should be uh, controlled. And 5.5 also state that within an effective quality management system, communication must be encouraged, clear and understandable, bi-directional at all level of the organization, open and active. So uh, there is a proper mechanism of communication. If you have set a responsibility and authority of any uh, person, uh, it must be communicated uh, to him and also to the other concerned persons. Internal uh, audits, external assessment, management review, uh, bulletin board, all employees meeting station box. These are all uh, uh, examples of communication uh, channels. Management review. Uh, we are uh, uh, 5.6 is related to the management review. Periodic assessment of the permanent system for continued uh, suitability, adequacy, and effectiveness. And uh, the inputs for the management review include results of the audits, customer feedback, process performance, and product conformity, status of the preventive and corrective action, follow up action from previous management review. Changes that could affect the quality management system, recommendation for improvement, and new or revised regulatory requirement. So uh, uh, during the each management system, these are the uh, requirements of the standard. You have to uh, discuss each element, uh, starting from uh, A and ending to H. Uh, you can also discuss the other uh, uh, things during the uh, management review meeting, but uh, these are supposed that you have to discuss each element of, uh, starting from A to H. A uh, management review uh, output include agenda, attendance record, presentation material, improvement needed to maintain the effectiveness of the quality management system and its process, improvement of the priority to customer requirements, resource need, uh, need statement of uh, confusion, the effectiveness of the quality management system. So, uh, if you uh, are familiar with the ISO 9000, uh, the meeting will be in the same manner uh, which uh, you have or uh, you are managing for the ISO 9000 uh, quality management system. The next is the resource management, provision of resources 6.1. Resources can be people, infrastructure, work environment, information, supplier, and uh, partners. Natural resources, financial resources. Adequate resources are prerequisite to uh, an effective quality management system. So uh, the uh, management have to ensure that it is providing all the necessary resources because uh, if there is uh, no resources available, uh, the effective quality management system cannot be implemented. And uh, uh, human resources is uh, a main uh, resource and it includes personal performing work, affecting product quality and device 
safety and effectiveness must be competent. So all the humans uh, who are uh, performing different uh, activities must be competent in terms of their education, their experience, their skills, and uh, they must have uh, uh, been trained effectively and they must have the formal certification uh, of their uh, job. Like if you have uh, some welder or soldering, uh, he must have the electrical certification. Yes. Organization must be able to demonstrate this. And uh, if it requires that uh, organization can uh, um, present that uh, its uh, human source are competent. And the uh, next resource is the infrastructure. It includes building, workspace, utility, water, electricity, waste management, etc., process equipment, software and hardware, equipment maintenance, activities, and frequency, porting services, cleaning. Uh, if not considered an appropriate, defined the above example can potentially affect conformance with product requirements. So you have to provide the uh, infrastructure which is necessary to uh, develop or produce a quality product. Work environment. The most significant factor within the work environment that can affect product quality are process equipment. Established work environment, controlled environment, clean room, personal, internal and external, health cleanliness, proactive equipment, uh, gear, uh, static uh, this setting of this brand foods and growing coning established means defined documented implemented and made and you have to uh, establish uh, uh, these um, uh, work environment uh, it means that it should be defined documented and implemented and maintained the next section is the product realization and uh, product realization is starting with sample 1, planning of the product realization. Product realization describes the process starting with planning, the determination of customer requirements, customer communication, design and development, purchasing, production and servicing, control of uh, monitoring and measuring devices, delivery of the medical device, record keeping requirement. And now we will uh, go through. Uh, these all uh, elements step by step. Uh, planning of the product realization the organization shall determine product quality objective and requirements, definition of medical device lifetime, record retention, establishing process and document resources needed, design and development, verification and validation, monitoring and inspection, test activity and product acceptance criteria, risk management records. Customer related process 7.2 Focus is on product and services to be supplied. This includes requirements related to the product, design input, output, for new product development, customer delivery expectations, versus delivery schedule, customer feedback and communication relative relative to order placed or product delivered, regulatory or legal requirements, design related factors included in customer orders unspecified customer expectation. So uh, you have to take care what that customer is expecting and you have to understand the expectation and requirement of the uh, customer so you can develop uh, your uh, product uh, according to the requirement of a customer. If you, you are, uh, if there is some flaw in and the uh, uh, understanding of the customer requirements, you can fill, fulfill its expectation. Uh, 7.2 is customer related process, review of product requirements prior to uh, committing to supply. So you have to first review what uh, the customer is asking. Product requirements defined are defined and documented. Uh, resolution of contract order discrepancy ensure ability to meet defined requirements review of post marketing product performance additional product information uh, for example service uh, additional applications maintenance 
Reptates, customer complaints, advisory notes. Again, records are key. So uh, you have to keep record of each activity. So uh, before uh, accepting the, uh, any order from the customer, you must ensure that you have well understood what he is asking and what he is requiring. And uh, if there is any mm, conflict, you must uh, resolve this conflict before uh, accepting any order. And uh, seven point three is related to design and development, and which state established procedure describe design process and all design activities, goals and objective of the design and development program, what is to be developed and timeline. The market uh, markets intended identification of organization's responsibility with respect to assume, uh, showing quality during the design and development phase to include in interface with any suppliers. Identification of the major task by um, phase of the design, expected outputs, deliverables and records from each phase Identification of appropriate existing and anticipated measurements and validation and production related activities. The selection of the reviewers and composition of review uh, team, planning transfer to production, this management activities, supplier selection. And the design input includes uh, intended use of the device indication and contra indications for use of the device, performance claims and performance requirements including normal use, storage, handling and maintenance, user and patient requirements, physical characteristics, human factors, usability requirements, safety and reliability requirements, toxicity and biocompatibility requirements, electromagnetic compatibility requirements, limits, tolerances, measurements and monitoring instruments, risk management or risk reduction methods, uh, reportable adverse events, complaints, fall, failure for previous products, other uh, historical data, documentation for previous design, compatibility requirements with respect uh, to uh, accessories and uh, accelerators device. Design and uh, design input uh, continuing uh, uh, compatibility requirements with uh, respect to the environment of uh, intended use, packing and labeling, including uh, consideration of to detect to detect uh, forcible misuse, uh, customer user training requirements, regulatory and security requirements of intended markets. Relevant volunteer standards, including industry standards, national, regional, or international standards, harmonized and other uh, consensus standards, manufacturing process, sterility requirements, economic and cost aspects, lifetime of the medical device requirements, and need for the servicing. And uh, design and output may include specification for the raw materials, component parts and sub-assemblies, drying and part space, customer training material, process and material specification, finished medical devices, product and process software, quality assurance procedures including acceptance criteria, manufacturing and inspection procedures. Design output uh, also include work environment requirements needed for the device, packing and labeling specification, identification and traceability requirements including procedure if necessary, installation and servicing procedures and material uh, fills, documentation for submissions to the regulatory authorities where the medical devices will be if appropriate. Uh, a record file to demonstrate that each design was developed and verified in accordance with the design and development planning. Uh, and the uh, design and development review uh, may address the following question. Do design satisfy specific specified requirements for the product? Is the input adequate to perform the design and development task or product design and pro 
processing capability is compatible? Have satisfy consideration been addressed? What is the potential impact of the product on the environment? Do design meet functional and operational requirements? For example, performance and uh, dependability objectives. Have appropriate materials been selected? Have appropriate facilities been selected? Is there adequate compatibility of the material components uh, or services element? And uh, is the design satisfactory for all the anticipated environment and local uh, and load con conditions? Are components or services elements standardized? And do they provide for reliability, availability, and maintainability? Is there a premium in tolerance and or configuration for interchangeability and replacement? Are plans for implementing the design technicality feasible? Uh, for example, purchasing, production, installation, inspections, and testing. If computer software has been used in design uh, computation, modulation, or analysis, has the software been validated? authorized, verified, and placed under configuration control. Have the inputs to such software and the output been appropriately verified and documented? Are the assumptions made during the design process valid? And now we will talk about our design verification, uh, which is uh, design verification is necessary to ensure that uh, design outputs conform to the specific requirements, design input, um, test, uh, bench test, lab test, chemical analysis, etc. Alternative calculation, comparison with proven design, inspections, document review, for example, specification drawings, plan and reports. And uh, design validation uh, goes beyond the technical issue after um, uh, of verifying output met input. It is intended to ensure that the medical devices meet user requirements and the intended use. Actual or uh, simulated conditions consider capability and knowledge of user, operating instructions, compatibility with other systems, the environment in which it will be used and restrictions on the use of the product uh, performed on the production or production equivalent units. If production equivalent uh, need to document uh, why it is uh, equivalent. So uh, you have to document it in each and everything. Uh, control of design and development change and uh, if there is any Change in design, you have to also uh, need to be documented. A product design may require change or modification for many reasons. Change can happen during or after the design phase. Change may result from design review, design verification or validation, omission or errors during the design phase, which have been identified afterwards. Uh, afterwards, difficulties in manufacturing, installation, or or servicing this management activities require uh, request from the customer or supplier change required for corrective and preventive action change needed to address safety, regulatory or other requirements improvement to function or performance. So uh, you you can uh, change the design if it is required due to any mentioned reason. Uh, you have to also uh, 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 study the effect of the change. If you change the design, you have to evaluate what effect it will have and on the on product requirements and specification, intended use, current risk assessment, different components of the product or system, manufacture, installation or use, verification and validation, the regulatory status of the product. So uh, uh, when um, if you change, uh, if you are going to change the design, you have to see each and everything very thoroughly that what impact it has on the other activity. The next uh, uh, class is related to purchasing. Uh, it is uh, the same like uh, uh, ISO 9000. Even the class number is the same, 7.4. Purchasing supplier selection and control consists of 
establishing criteria for parts, quality, system process, control, methodology, etc. Evaluating against those <coughs> predetermined criteria, selecting ongoing monitoring, that can depend uh, on the nature and the risk associated with the product or service and includes outsourced process. Uh, so you have to uh, evaluate the supplier uh, and check them and uh, it should be an ongoing um, um, monitoring activity and uh, it depends upon the uh, uh, product or services and uh, uh, how you are outsourcing it. Uh, the purchasing information uh, describes the product to be purchased in sufficient detail such as technical information and specification, test and acceptance requirement, quality requirements for product services and outsourced processes, environmental requirements in manufacturing, storage, transportation, etc. Security requirements, certification requirements. So uh, when you are purchasing any um, thing, you have to uh, describe each and every information and you have to describe each and every requirement uh, which are necessary for you and uh, can uh, impact uh, the quality of your product or maybe uh, you, you have to fulfill some uh, regulatory requirements. Uh, purchasing information also includes uh, requirement for product approval and subsequent changes procedures, processes and equipment, qualification of personal, quality management system requirement, method of uh, communication responsibility, special uh, instructions, feasibility and test records, uh, record retention and retrievability, etc. Uh, condition for review and change to purchasing ag uh, agreement, supply records and organization record. So you have to uh, also maintain uh, these information and uh, you have to keep in the record of uh, uh, these all the, all the information and activities. Verification of purchase product to ensure specified requirements are met, receiving inspection shipment are complete properly, identified undamaged product in coming inspection 100% sampling, uh, you uh, skip lot etc. Certification of supply, certificate of confirmance or acceptance test report from supplier. So you can uh, uh, you can verify the product by any way, why uh, you can perform the 100% inspection or you can uh, say some sample uh, to check or you can also trust on uh, uh, the supply certificate. Uh, it depends upon the nature of the product and uh, the competency level of uh, the supplier. Uh, you must be practically defined within organization quality management system including action when required or not met. Applies to all products received from outside the organization quality management system. So if uh, there is any problem uh, in the outsourcing process you have your verification actually should be increased. And uh, now we are going to uh, discuss product realization and uh, 7.5 is related to the production and uh, service provision. Control of production and service uh, requires control condition and includes many aspects. Uh, these aspects are the infrastructure, documented and record, procedure, uh, specification, work instructions, and uh, instructions, test results, defined by impact on the quality and regulatory requirement as well as risk management activities, suitable equipment, process management, monitoring, it is for lease, delivery and post delivery including feasibility. So uh, you have to uh, 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 manage all uh, these things in a controlled environment and you have to control all uh, these things and you have to keep records of these. Uh, all control. Production and ser uh, service provision uh, we are going to discuss the validation of process for production and service uh, which is uh, required where the resulting output cannot be verified. In uh, some processes you are unable 
to verify uh, the output during the process. So uh, for these uh, kind of process, uh, you have to perform the validation. And define criteria for review and approval of process, approval of equipment and personal qualified, qualification use of the specific method and procedure, criteria for revalidation, software use in automated process must be validated. So you have to define uh, each and every criteria for such uh, process which are required to be validated. Uh, production and service provision 7.5. Validation of process for product and service. Process validation activities can be described in phase, definition, review and approval of equipment specification, installation qualification, operational qualification, performance qualification. So uh, where uh, there is any uh, such process, uh, you have to uh, define the uh, criteria in, the, in terms of qualification. Production and service provision, um, is, it is same like uh, ISO 9000, identification is required uh, throughout the product realization process. It includes raw material, components, uh, finished medical devices, this uh, facilities, uh, this facility at fault, uh, diagnose, diagnosis in the event of quality problem, is it Prerequisite for traceability. Provision for identification and uh, segregation, return medical devices from confirming products must also be established. So you have to uh, develop a mechanism and uh, by using uh, this mechanism, you can identify any product at any stage of production. And uh, uh, traceability means the ability to trace the history or location of product or activity by recorded identification forward to customer, also known as tracking, device tracking, backward to raw material, components, process, use in manufacturing, calibration, etc. Uh, example, trace a non confident back to its source and determine location of the uh, remainder of the uh, affected batches. Uh, requirements are defined for implantable devices. So you have to develop a mechanism for traceability by using this mechanism you must be able to trace the, uh, and the history of any device. Uh, you have shipped to the customer or you have purchased from any supplier. The next uh, is uh, customer property and it states customer property within the context of the standard is defined as a property or asset owned by the customer and under control of the organization. Anything which has given uh, by the customer uh, to any or to any supplier or organization is uh, called customer property. Example of the asset property are raw material or components of um, supply for ingredient in the product including packing material, product supplied for repair, maintenance or upgrading, product supplied for the further processing, packing, sterilization or testing, customer intellectual property, these must be properly identified, safeguarded, maintained. So you have to properly identify the customer supplied or customer property products and you have to protect them and you have to maintain the record of such customer property. And uh, next is the pro preservation of products applies to the product realization process and includes storage, handling, transportation and delivery may include installation, gloves, static and this active measure uh, governing temperature, immutability dust, uh, particle uh, count packing methods of transportation, ASC, ground, environment, genetically controlled, to avoid damage, uh, deterioration or uh, contamination during handling, storage and distribution. So you have a mechanism that uh, uh, each uh, product can be uh, handled uh, in a safe manner 
and during the delivery phase of the product to the customer, it should remain the same and it should not be damaged. Uh, control of monitoring and measuring devices is this clause is same like the ISO 9000 and it states the standard explicitly refer to the monitoring and measuring devices including software to ensure valid results. Uh, uh, instruments shall be calculated or verified at specific intervals traceable to standards, uniquely identified traceability to products uh, protected from damage, violation, or um, inadvertent adjustment during storage and use. Software use in monitoring or measurement process must be validated. For example, for calibration, may be instruments used for uh, indication only, not uh, quantitative uh, volumetric measurement. Uh, glass scale. So every uh, instrument you are using uh, for measurement must be calibrated. Monitoring and measurement processes are required to ensure product conformance, ensure conformance of the quality measurement system. And now, now we are going uh, to discuss uh, sec class eight measurement and analysis and improvement. And uh, it starts with the uh, eight point one. General requirements, meeting and measurement processes are required to ensure product conformance, insurance conformance of quality management system, maintain effectiveness of the quality management system, and 8.2 states monitoring and measurement. And feedback as key performance indicator of the quality management system include customer related information, post market surveillance, etc., internal and external audit results. Monitoring and measurement of processes, not limited to product production process, but also quality management system processes. Monitoring and measurement of product may extend to point of installation. And 8.3 is a control of non-conforming product. Uh, if, uh, this includes non-conforming product occurring in the organization own facility as well as to the non-conforming product received or delivered by the organization. Uh, determine products affected, identify the non conformity product at supply, in house, in transit, at customer, document the existence and root cause of the non conformity, evaluate the nature of the non conformity, determine and record a uh, disposition to be made, control by physical uh, segregation the subsequent processing of the non conforming product. Uh, consistent which, uh, with the uh, disposition decision, notify other as appropriate regulate uh, three authorities, customer, uh, suppliers, ordinary material facility, define and implement corrective and preventive action, assess the effectiveness of corrective and preventive action. So you have uh, to develop a proper mechanism of uh, control of non-conforming uh, products and um, in a way that no uh, non conforming product will be shipped to the uh, customer. Uh, the 8.4 is related to the analysis of data. This includes determination, collection, and analysis of appropriate data uh, to demonstrate the suitability and effectiveness of quality management system to evaluate if improvement of the quality management system effectiveness can be made. This encompasses uh, supplier to performance, Product conformance, trends of process and products, feedback, results of these activities should feed into management review as well as considered for risk management activities. They also serve to identify opportunity for preventive action. So you have to analyze the data, uh, the suppliers, the uh, in-house processes, the customer complaints and the feedback. And you have to discuss uh, uh, this. Do you should discuss uh, this uh, analysis of data during the main review? And you should you use uh, this analysis of data for the improvement. Eight point five is related to improvement. This again cover a broad scope. Continued uh, suitability and effectiveness of the quality management and system documented complaints, investigation and uh, resulting action, product advisory notes, uh, field corrective action, 
communicated uh, to customer and their applicants to the regulatory authorities. Improvement and uh, also uh, cover the corrective actions. Corrective action is intended to eliminate non conformities with the intent to prevent, uh, prevent recurrence. Non conformities may be identified in the quality management system, on the product, in manufacturing process, in metrology, uh, with training, environmental condition, control of equipment with uh, suppliers. So um, you have, you can uh, take uh, uh, the corrective action uh, to eliminate any non conformity And uh, uh, the corrective action should be effective. Effective corrective action includes the following. Clear and accurate identification of the non conformity affected processes or procedures, identification of affected devices and uh, as recipients, identification of the root cause of the non-conformity, action required to prevent recurrence, required approval prior to taking action, record that corrective uh, action was taken as identified, effectiveness check like to prevent uh, recurrence, no new risk introduced by the corrective action. So uh, every corrective action you oh, are going to take must be okay. And uh, in the same way, uh, there are also preventive action. And preventive action is intended uh, to address potential non conformities And this is uh, to prevent the potential non conformity Sources to consider include information and data from receiving an incoming inspection, product requiring rework, reject or yield data, customer feedback and warranty claims, process arrangements, identification of uh, results that are out of trends but not out of specification, supplier performance, services reports and concessions, devi deviations. Conclusion. Uh, it is important to bear in mind that ISO standards are updated periodically Revision and updated uh, do occur and ISO one is due for the uh, update in next few years. Uh, as uh, quality system standards are updated, you must ensure that quality management system uh, must keep up with those updates in other uh, in order the manufacturer remain in compliance. So uh, this, this is. Uh, expected that uh, the current IS 13485 standard will be revised in 2016. Uh, there are some benefit of uh, uh, these uh, standard um, access to markets that recognize or require a certification, including Canada and Europe. Implementing a quality management system in general helps to motivate staff and provide a better definition of roles and key responsibilities, reduce operational costs by highlighting process deficiencies and improving efficiency, increase customer satisfaction by consistently delivering quality products and systematically addressing complaints, proven commitment to quality through an internationally recognized standards and uh, as transparency to the way compliance, surveillance or product recalls are handled. So this is all about the quality management system uh, for the medical devices. This is just an overview and uh, I have uh, rushed uh, so many slides just uh, to finish uh, uh, to the, a basic concept uh, of quality management system um, based on ISO 12405. So thank you very much. Thank you, Mr. Shah, for this presentation. Now, with the time left, we will go ahead with questions. Therefore, if you have any questions, it's a time to ask them. Please use the comment box or raise hand function to, in order to, uh, to ask your questions. Thank you. The first question here is, in your experience with audits, what is a main nonconformity that medical device manufacturers face or you have encountered generally? Uh, mostly in our area, uh, the non-conformity is related to a risk assessment. 
uh, in the medical devices, um, especially which are manufacturing in the third world, there is very uh, a poor risk assessment. They don't cover all the aspects of the risk assessment. Thank you, Mr. Shah. The next question is, if you are an outsourcing manufacturer, do you have to implement ISO 13485 or the outsourcer must? Uh, if if the, the major operations are under your control, then uh, it is not necessary that outsource uh, uh, process uh, um, should be ISO 13485. But if your core, you are uh, uh, managing the core processes outsource, then it is must that uh, uh, outsource uh, supplier uh, should have uh, 13485. But uh, to be in the safe side, it is good that if uh, all the actors in the supply chain must have the 13485. Thank you. Another question is, in your experience, does ISO 13485 apply to all medical device manufacturers? Yes, because it is a generic standard and you can apply it to all the organization. Uh, either these are the small size organization or these are the big organization or what, whatever they are manufacturing, is, uh, it can be applied to uh, all the organizations. Thank you. Moving on to the next question, which is how often should a medical device manufacturer perform an internal audit considering the importance of the quality of their, pro of their products? Please give an example in your opinion. Uh, it is better uh, to perform the internal quality audit uh, twice in a year. But, uh, but if uh, they, there is a big organization and they can uh, plan uh, their internal audit uh, by department wise. And if, if they, uh, the organization is small, uh, they can plan um, the full organization internal audit twice a year in, in a year. So uh, twice in a year is um, mostly organizations are uh, doing their internal audit. Thank you. Another question is what consent standard have most manufacturing used for the conformity of medical devices since the FDA has approved many? Pardon? What consent standard have most manufacturing companies use for the conformity of medical devices within their organization since the FDA has approved many? Um, FDA has its own uh, uh, quality management system standard and it is uh, QSR, quality system regulation. So if somebody uh, have to fulfill the requirements of FDA, uh, uh, it is better uh, to adopt the uh, uh, QSR, quality system regulation, which is basically a, a medical related uh, standard addressed by the FDA. Thank you. Let's see. I have the last question is, what is the main difference between CE marketing certificate and ISO 1348 certificate? The main difference is uh, ISO 1345 is the system certification. It is a, a certification for the uh, organization. But uh, CE marketing is for the product certification. It is for the sing, uh, product that uh, it is fulfilling the uh, specific requirements. But uh, uh, ISO 13485 is not a product certification, it is a system certification. So uh, the main difference is the uh, system certification and product certification. Thank you. Because of the time limited, we have to conclude this presentation. However, if you have any other questions, you can send your questions through email and we will answer them individually. Thank you again, Mr. Shaw, for this informative presentation. 
Also, I want to thank all the attendees as well for taking the time out of their busy schedule to join us today. We hope you enjoyed the webinar. To keep up with our webinars, please check PECB's webinar schedule in our website www.pecb.com or our official no social media network. Since next week, we are organizing webinars on interesting topics. Next Monday, we will be hosting a topic on the proposed changes for ISO 13485 Part 1. Thank you again, Mr. Shaw and everyone. Enjoy the rest of your days.